Thank you so much for tuning into Destiny. We know that as you receive grace in super abundance and the gift of righteousness, you're absolutely going to reign in life. I want to thank you for your monthly support and invite you out to Destiny where you'll get a word that's going to set you free and change your life. Get ready for the favor of God in your life this year. Friend, I'm so glad you tuned in today to Destiny and you already know you're going to get some good news. Do you know that the gospel is nothing but good news? Paul said it like this in Romans chapter 1, verse 16 and 17. He says, I am not ashamed of the gospel, the euangelion, that's the good news of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation. You know this, that the good news about Christ is the power of God to healing. The good news, what's good news about healing? Jesus is healer, is the healer. The good news, uh, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation. That word salvation, soteria in the Greek, it means healing. It means abundance. It means preservation from all hurt, harm, or danger, protection. Everything that God has comes through hearing the good news of the gospel. You say, Pastor Lee, I'm saved, but I'm not getting too many good things. You need to hear more of the good news. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the words of Christ, hearing and hearing. The more you hear the good news of Christ, the more you'll experience the good news of the gospel, the good things of the gospel. The gospel is nothing but good news because that's what Jesus is. Jesus went about, ran around doing good and healing all of those oppressed of the devil. Acts chapter 10 and verse 38 tells us that the gospel is good news because of Jesus. Jesus is the gospel. And that's what we've been talking about, this good news of Jesus. Now, you know, I, I, one of the things that I'm really, uh, that's really big on my heart is that we as believers, even though we have Jesus, don't realize the benefit that comes with him living on board with us. You know, um, it, the, the example, the metaphor that I've used sometimes is this living room example, this formal, formal living room. We had this formal living room in our house, and we still do. Uh, our, our living room is a little bit different now, uh, but the one that we had growing up was one that nobody could go into. The kids definitely couldn't go into it. Our parents went into it on occasion, rare. But you could see the lines on the carpet, and it was to be reverence. You know, it was the most expensive furniture in the house was in there that nobody sat on. Lights I've never seen turned on. Carpeting that, is, that has footprints on it when the kids walk through it. And the dog even, we had a dog, the dog wouldn't even go in there. We had trained him when he was a real small puppy to not go into that room. He could go anywhere else, do not go in the living room. And I think oftentimes that's how we see God. God, we understand he's to be reverenced. We understand he's to be worshiped. We understand he's to be awed. But the God of the new covenant lets us know he's the God that wants to live right down where we are to get right in where we are with every one of our problems. When you understand that there's no longer any condemnation, you're not afraid to run to God with whatever your problem is, whatever your sin, addiction, whatever it is, whatever your weakness, you run right to him because you know he isn't going to slap you and say, you're out of here. You can't, you can't go to heaven. I'm done with you. That isn't the God we serve. That's not the God of the Bible. And I really believe that many believers, because they have the wrong impression of who Jesus is, don't experience the abundant life. Don't experience the great blessed life that God has for us. And that's my endeavor. That's our mission to tell you who Jesus really is. And that's what we're going to do right now. If you've got your Bible, turn it open. I'm going to read one verse in John chapter 14, verse six. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the father except through me. Jesus gave this answer in response to, uh, to Thomas. Thomas, <laughs> Jesus had said, hey, in heaven there's many mansions. I've got a place prepared for you. And where, you go, where I'm going, you know. And, uh, and how I'm going, you know that too. And Thomas spoke up and said, we don't know how, where you're going and we don't know how to get there. What in the world are you talking about? And Jesus simply said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And I believe what Jesus is saying is, I'm the way to everything. Jesus is everything. Jesus, and, and I know that sounds like a cliche. Jesus is the answer. An old song, uh, uh, I can't even remember his name right now, who used to sing, Jesus is the answer. 
Jesus is the answer to your financial problem. He's the answer to your sickness problem. He's the answer to your loneliness problem. He's your answer to everything. But if we don't know who he really is, even as born again believers, we'll not experience the great things that he has for us, the great life that he has in store for us. Jesus said it in John 10:10. 10, 10. He says, I came that you may have and enjoy life and have it in abundance to the full till it overflows. That's what Jesus said he came to do. That's why he came. But we want to enjoy that life. And I want to help you do it. Turn in your Bibles, if you would, to Luke chapter five. Very familiar story. I know you're familiar with this, but let's read it because I want to, I want to help you see who Jesus really is. I want, to, want you to see how much he's in love with you, how much he wants you to live in abundance, how much he wants you to live in health and peace, how much he wants you to enjoy your children, your relationship, how much he wants you to enjoy your career, your life. I'm not saying that it's going to be a life without any challenges or problems. The Bible plainly lets us know that there's uh, that the righteous face some tribulation, but he delivers us from every one of our problems. Every one of our problems, God is there right there in the middle with us, delivering us from every one of them. And you'll know this if you, if you understand that Jesus, he's with you, never leaving you nor forsaking you. It makes your problems a little easier. It makes makes going through the difficulties in life much simpler when you know that God's with you right in the midst of it. I hope you're in Luke chapter 5. Here's, it's, it begins, you, you know the story, it's about Peter, but watch this. So it was, as the multitude pressed about him to hear the word of God. Do you know that the most important thing that you can do as a believer is hear the word of God on a consistent basis? The word of God contains the DNA of God. Uh, in John chapter 1, verse 1, it says, In the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. The same was in, in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. By who? By the word. Without him was not anything made that was made. Without the word, nothing that's made was made. So everything in our life is made by the word of God. And the word of God coming out of your mouth is very powerful. Right in the midst of sickness, the word of God coming out of your mouth will bring healing. Why? Because it contains the DNA of God. It contains the faith of God. And we're encouraged. We're, we're told to speak the word of God, continually to keep it on our mouth. That was the instruction that God told uh, Joshua when he was getting ready to, to take over after Moses, he said, this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, day and night. And that's the key, getting these words on the inside of us and meditating, speaking on them, saying them day and night. Instead of talking about the problem, talk about the God who fixes the problem. Talk to the problem. Actually, Jesus even said in Mark chapter 11 to talk to the mountain, speak to it. Tell that mountain, you can't stay in here. You can't stay. Debt, you cannot stay in my life. Problem, you cannot stay here. Cancer, you cannot live in my body. I will not die of this thing. I will live and not die. You've got to determine that you as a child of God are the head only and not the, not the tail. You are above only and not beneath. That you are blessed coming and going. Blessed in the city and blessed in the country. Everywhere you go, God goes. Everywhere you go. When you walk in the grocery store, the whole place place just lit up because you walked in with the presence of God. I'm telling you, you're greater than you think you are because of who lives on the inside of you. Not because of who you are, but because of whose you are. You are his property. You are God's property. Bought with a price, the blood of Jesus. That's good news. Amen. Amen. In Luke chapter five, there, let's try to get past verse one. All right. So it was as the multitude pressed about him to hear the word of God that he stood by the lake Genesaret and saw two boats standing by the lake. But the fishermen had gone from them and were washing their nets. Then he got into one of the boats, which was Simon's, and asked him to put out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the multitudes from the boat. Isn't that, Simon doesn't know it at this point, but this is his day, the day that's going to change the rest of his life, Jesus coming on board his boat. And this, this brings me to a great point right here. You know, if you're born again, if you're born again, Jesus is on board with you. And I want us as believers to have the same kind of life-changing experience with Jesus being on board with us that, these, that the disciples did. There's something about the presence of Jesus when you really know who he is and you experience the true person of Jesus that it changes every everything in your life. It changes your priorities. It changes your, it changes everything about you. 
there's something about Jesus that makes that that his presence brings to your life when you understand who he is that changes everything about your life you're going to see it here and we're going to see it in our own lives but look at this and um, then he got into the boat here watch it verse four when he had stopped speaking after he topped the multitudes from the boat he when he had stopped speaking he said to Simon launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch, if you got your Bible right there, circle nets, because Jesus told him to let down your nets. But Simon answered and said to Jesus, Master, we've toiled all night and have and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. Circle net there, because uh, Jesus tells Simon to let down the nets. But Simon has low expectation here. Why? Because this is essentially what he's saying. Listen, Jesus, you're obviously a great preacher. We can see the crowd, the multitude that you drew here. You're a fine uh, speaker, obviously. However, I am a fisherman. I love fishing. I have a passion for fishing. I've been fishing my whole life. My daddy was a fisherman. My granddaddy was a fisherman. We, fi we fished on this lake uh, forever, for generations. We've been here fishing on this lake. But there was something about Jesus and Jesus being on board that made him say, you know, nevertheless, at your word, I let down the net. Now, he didn't, he wasn't sold out on this. And remember, he was cleaning his nets. And so he probably pulled out his, what I like to call the ghetto net, you know, the net that, uh, that Pookie and him had probably given him that was underneath the boat somewhere. But he, you know, he'd been up, had been fishing all night. He's frustrated. He said he'd he toiled all night. So letting us know he was pretty frustrated there. But nevertheless, he pulled out a net. And I don't think it was the greatest net. You'll see why here in just a second. He says in verse six, and when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish and their net was breaking. You can circle net right there because Jesus expectation is always much better than ours. Whatever you're expecting in life, know that God's expectation for your life is much bigger and much better. God has greater plans for you than you could imagine. He has greater plans for your business, greater plans for your health, greater plans for your marriage, greater plans for your children than you can possibly imagine. God's always thinking bigger than us. Ephesians 3.20 says, Now unto him that's able to do exceeding, abundantly, above all we could ever ask, think, or imagine, amplified version, ever think ask or imagine according to the power that's at work within us. Now, this is amazing. God is able to do exceeding abundantly according to the power that's at work within us. It's what we believe he can do. God wants to do bigger for you this year. <laughs> Expect to. Watch this. He says uh, in verse um, five, uh, six, yeah, seven. So they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so that they began to sink. And can you imagine that? Can you imagine this is the catch of their life? Their boat sinking? Come on. Verse 8. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For, uh, verse 9, for he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish which they had taken. And so also were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were the partners of Simon. Jesus said to Simon, do not be afraid. From now on, you will catch men. Now, verse 11 is the verse that I want you to see here. Look at verse 11. So when they had brought their boats to land, sinking, keep in mind, these boats are sinking, bringing them to land, sinking with fish overflowing with fish. Can you imagine how many fish it takes to sink a boat? Watch this. When they had brought their boats to, the land, to land, they forsook all and followed him. Now let's stop right here just for a second. Come join Destiny in our celebration of freedom. Sunday, July 7th. Service will be at 11 a.m. Pastor Clint Brown from Faith World, Orlando will be here to minister the word and song. This is going to be an awesome celebration, praise and worship from Pastor Clint Brown. Tell somebody, bring a friend. Experience a celebration of freedom in Jesus, July 7th at Destiny. Services at 11 a.m. Tell somebody. Bring a friend! They forsook all and followed him. What in the world happened here? Think about this. 
Jesus, Peter's first day meeting Jesus, Peter passionate about fishing. He loves fishing. This is his, fishing is his life. I imagine on his, on his horse, he has a bumper sticker that says, I love fishing. He loves it. This is his passion. But one day with Jesus on board his boat, now think about this. He's a businessman. He's a businessman who's toiled all last night, caught nothing, same boat, same lake, you know, same, same net, same everything, worse net, same everything, just one difference, and it's Jesus. This is the gospel. Jesus makes the difference in everything. Now watch, this is, this is so amazing to me, though. This is the catch of his life. This is the epic catch of this entire lake. Nobody in history has had a catch like this. This is, the, this is the catch that every fisherman on Lake Genesaret has dreamed about. This is the catch that Peter has dreamed about. This is the catch that they've talked about. This is the catch that they lied about for years. Yeah, you're, this is the one. This is the one. This made it in the Jerusalem times. This is the catch that everybody is hearing about. It's blowing everybody away. Everybody, the, the, the newspapers are there. They're taking pictures of Peter smiling with the fish. This is epic. This is historic. And now Peter, for some reason, you read the passage, forsook all and followed him, followed Jesus. What is it about Jesus that would make a fisherman, an avid angler who loves fishing, who makes his living fishing, whose livelihood is fishing, who lives on these seas, who lives on Lake Genesaret, who does this every day for his life, walk away, not only from the fish. Think about it. Peter's a fisherman. When you say, hold up, Jesus, before we get up out of here, why don't we, uh, why don't we just set up a little, little booth right here and at least let me sell some of these fish. If we sell these fish, I'm just telling you, it's, it's going to be a good day. It's going to be a good month. There's nobody, every one of these fishermen wants to, wants to buy these fish. But he doesn't do that. And not only does he, does he walk away from the fish, but he walks away from the boats. He walks away from the entire business. What in the world is it about Jesus that's so amazing that causes this man who loves, who has a passion for fishing to walk away from his business, to walk away from his boats and walk away from all this revenue. I'm telling you, this is the truth of the gospel. It's Jesus. When we really get to know who he really is, and this is, these stories in the Bible let me know that there's more to Jesus than what many of us who are believers are experiencing. What Peter experienced was the grace of God. He experienced unmerited favor. He experienced, uh, undo he, he, didn't, he didn't deserve this. This is why he said, remember what he did? As soon as he, he's seeing this go on, he says, Jesus, you know, depart from me. I'm a sinful man. In other words, I'm a businessman and I understand you've done this for me. And typically in business, it's going to take me doing something for you, but I can't do something for you. I ain't right. I ain't doing something for you like you've done for me. I, I don't even have the capacity to. I don't have the ability to, to repay you for what you've done for me. Please just depart from me. You, just your presence is, is right here. It's just making me feel bad about all my, all my wrongdoings. And here you are blessing me. You're blessing me like this and I'm messed up. And this is what the grace of God is. The grace of God is Jesus wants to come right where we are. Not right, not just us, but he wants to come right where humanity is and exemplify his love for him through his goodness, through his abundance, through his healing. You notice everywhere Jesus went, he went about healing, he went about healing. That's that's I mean, that's kind of the, the calling card of Jesus. He went around doing healing. Every person that he came in contact with, he was healing them. And none of them were worthy of it. They were, they were sinners. They were people messed up. And, and, and in fact, leprosy is like a typology of sin. But then when these 10 lepers came to Jesus, he healed them all. And only one came back and said, thank you. Jesus is loving. Jesus loves us more than we love ourselves. He cares for us more than we care for ourselves. God wants to make our life an abundant, joyful life through Jesus and through really getting to know him. And, and, and friend, this is, my, this is my assignment to help us to know who Jesus really is, to see him for, for who the scriptures say he is. Not what we've been told by some people and even great uh, great people like myself who are pastors who've gotten behind the pulpit and had the wrong impression of who he is. I'm telling you, the scriptures show us that Jesus is a loving God, that he's a loving 
friend who wants to bless us in area, every area of our life. And friend, this is really the prerequisite under the new covenant for us to, re to receive his goodness. If we don't believe he's good, we'll never be able to receive of his goodness. Think about it, just in natural terms. If you have a, a person who you think is angry with you, you think they're mad at you, are you gonna go to that person and ask for anything? Chances are, let's, let's put it like this. If you had borrowed money from a friend and you were unable to pay the money back, you couldn't pay it because of one reason or another. Don't you think that you'll avoid that person? You'll see them at church and you'll try to sit on the other side or, or avoid them in any way possible because you feel bad. You have this condemnation and guilt because there's a debt that I'm unable to pay. I want to pay it, but I can't pay it. But if I see you, you're going to say something and I'm going to feel bad about not being able to pay the debt. I'm going to I just feel bad about it. And so you avoid them. This is the case with God and man. Man had a sin debt that he couldn't pay. And so naturally he's fearful, thinking God's mad at him because of this sin debt. But here's the good news. The good news of the gospel is God overpaid our sin debt by his own son, Jesus Christ. He sent his son into the earth to pay the sin debt that we owed. So it's like this. It's like somebody else paid your debt that you owed. But here's the bad news. You never knew it. Somebody didn't tell you. Somebody didn't tell you. Think about it. That friend that you owed the money, if somebody paid the debt, but they never told you they paid the debt, you still feel the guilt and condemnation, although the debt's paid. And your friend's actually not even mad at you. Your friend's glad because this person, you owed him $10,000, but your friend who's rich overpaid him. Say he paid him $100,000. Your friend is very happy now because of the debt you owed. That's what the gospel is. Jesus overpaid your debt. You had a sin debt. God was uh, upset about the sin debt, but he's not mad at you. He took his math, his wrath out on Jesus, took all the wrath of our sin out on Jesus. He's no longer mad at us because Jesus paid our sin debt. We are born again through Jesus, through simply believing in Jesus. And Jesus is our all. He didn't just pay our sin debt. He paid our sickness debt. He paid our financial debt. He paid our everything. And the more we know his goodness, the more we know and hear about how good he is, the more we'll be able to receive freely, freely receive. And this is what the Bible says over and over, freely receive freely receive his grace. There's nothing we can do. There's nothing that my son can pay me for me to love him. I love him because he has my name, because he came from my loins. He came from me and my wife. I love him and there's nothing he can do about that. There's nothing he did to deserve that. He did it. He was born. I brought him in the earth and because of that, because of my love for my wife and because he's my son, I love him unconditionally. God loves you the same way, friend. And the more you understand it, the more you experience it. Friend, I can't wait to tell you more about this good news next week. So tune in and get more of this good news of the gospel. I love you. See you next week. Peace. Come join destiny in our celebration of freedom. Sunday, July 7th. Service will be at 11 a.m. Clint Brown from Faith World, Orlando, will be here to minister the word and song. Nothing will ever, nothing will ever be the same. This is going to be an awesome celebration, praise and worship from Pastor Clint Brown. Tell somebody, bring a friend. Ready for my child. Experience a celebration of freedom in Jesus, July 7th at Destiny. Services at 11 a.m. Tell somebody, bring a friend. Swag, saved with Abundant Grace Cafe. This is a great youth fellowship that meets before service every second and fourth Sundays at 10 a.m. Youths, you don't want to miss it. Be there. Believers will never face judgment because Jesus received all of your condemnation and judgment at the cross. Jesus didn't come to condemn the world, but rather to save the world. Grace reigns through righteousness. Sin and death reign through condemnation. Most believers experience sin and death to the degree they receive the enemy's condemnation through the law. 
Order this five-part series with your gift of $25 by logging on to the web at leestokes.org or by visiting Destinations Bookstore here at the church or by calling Destiny at 336-235-0880. No longer can you come under the wrath of God or condemnation, nor think that you can be uprooted from the kingdom of God. Listen up, ladies. Don't you want to keep your temple feeling good and in shape? Experience the uplifting feeling of fitness classes that are fun while getting in shape. Join us every Monday at 6 p.m. at 560 Farragut Street. The cost is only $7. You'll be motivated and empowered to improve your life through fitness. It's your destiny. Feel good. You'll be coming back for more. Friend, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to watch this broadcast today. I am certain that you got something today that's going to change your life forevermore and, and cause you to begin to win in life in ways you've never won before. If by chance you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, I want to invite you to accept him as your Lord and Savior. Just say this prayer with me if you want him to be your Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart and be my Lord and be my savior. Friend, it's really that simple. If you prayed that prayer right now, you're saved. You can just throw your hands up and say right now, thank you, Jesus, I'm saved. It really is that simple. But friend, here's the most important thing. You need to be in a church where you can hear the word of God and begin to walk out all that he has for you. Begin to realize all the great things that he has for you. And I'm telling you, I just don't know of a better church than destiny for you to come and be involved in. I want to invite you to come out to our services, the, the times and the and the location is on the screen but just come on out and see us log on to our website and find out more about us i promise you god has great things in store for you friend he's not mad at you your past is completely gone and god has a great future in store for you he wants you to win he wants you to absolutely be on top so come on out and be with us at any of our services i look forward to meeting you i look forward to seeing you on top and also i look forward to seeing you right here on this same broadcast next week at this same time i'm telling you, you better get ready to win because God has great things in store for you. I look forward to seeing you again real soon. God bless you. Good plan for your life at Destiny.